Hey guys, uh, I see a lot of um, posts about people having some shoddy uh, drive shaft data. So I figured I would make a uh, video kind of showing you what I use and uh, the results. So this is from Davis Technologies. Uh, and this is a 32 tooth uh, ring that goes on your yoke for your rear end. They come in a whole bunch of different sizes. This one happens to be 2.125 inches uh, for the car that I'm working on. And this is the Davis sensor. So this is the, the part number for it is the DAV-003. He makes a couple different ones, but I typically use this on, on all of them. Uh, this will work for you know Holly or any other fuel injection system. And it's also the one that you want to use when you put a profiler uh, in the car or any of his uh, traction control stuff so this is the one I, I always default to and um, it comes with some information so it works anywhere between 4 volts and 24 volt which is nice ground and then your output so uh, if you're just installing this to Holly the white wire is going to be your your frequency or speed input set your gap to 30 thousandths and then um, you know, you always want to make sure it's square on the uh, on the actual ring. So the thing that's nice about this is might be hard to tell on the video, but the the ring itself is wide. Okay, so one problem that it seems to uh, to be common with a lot of uh, some of the other ones out there, some of the magnets that, that some of the companies use are really small. Uh, some of the teeth that that some of the companies use are really thin. Anyway, this nice thick. Uh, collar or this nice thick uh, tooth here with a, a, a rounded off. I'm oh, sorry. Here we go. Uh, this it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see that there you go. You can see how it's um, the, the taper cut to it, right? So all of this was intentional. Uh, this has always proven to be fantastic results. So it's kind of hard to see because my camera doesn't want to focus, but the sensor. Uh, as long as you center it over top of the body of the ring and the teeth, uh, it always uh, always gives me good results. So, when you're installing one of these, you know, obviously you'll mount this up on the rear end and whatnot, whatever fabricated bracket you have to make to make this work. Um, there's plenty of companies out there that sell brackets. Like if you use a 9 inch from Strange or something, it typically comes with one. Uh, the center chunk typically comes with one. So, 3 8 24 thread so if you have an ultra case you're gonna have to drill and tap the uh, the the hole because it's a 5 16 uh, thread that's in an ultra case not that big of a job just do it before you put it in the car it makes it a heck of a lot easier and this is the part that uh, gets a lot of questions right so this video I'm showing you with Davis's stuff this is what I recommend on every single car that I do uh, I always recommend doing it with this ring and uh, this sensor because the data is important, right? So don't, if you're gonna do traction control, if you're gonna do, if you want good data, um, use good stuff, right? So this has always been a thousand percent in every single application I've put it in. So when it comes to wiring, here's what I did. So this is three conductor shielded cable from Holly, right? So this seems to be a, a, a pretty big uh, question that always comes up. You know, what, what do you do with the shield? Why are we shielding it? So in this application, our, the way I do it is this purple wire is going to be our signal. So the purple is going to go to the white. Okay. And then red is going to be our power. So we have a couple different options for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you here shortly. And then black is our ground. Okay. So, what you want to do is you want to ground this from either a ground output from the ECU or a sensor ground location. And what I do is I terminate the ground with the uh, shield, okay, and then that terminates to the ECU. The other end, imagine this is like eight feet long, whatever. I'm not wasting a whole bunch of cable for this. Um, the other end, you've got your shield. And what you want to do is you want to pull the, the you know, when you strip this jacket off of, off of the top of this, you're going to want to take your shield, fold it back, 
take a piece of uh, adhesive lined heat shrink and you know kind of cover it up like so and shrink it down um, so that you have you know ju you'll just have just your three wires coming out that's going to connect to your sensor okay so let's go look at the computer and um, I'll show you how we go about and doing that so my screen capture software decided to not want to work so we got to deal with the old school way of doing this so we'll look at that in a minute so here's what we do here is our input right drive shaft speed digital speed frequency where it's where it's at let's configure it so this is configured for rpm um now a lot of times what happens is um if you've got say eight or 16 or four uh magnets or teeth um you, th that's where you'd put this here but here we have 32 so we're putting 32 teeth you know pulses per revolution and then a lot of times what happens is the people will tell you oh we'll just run up the pulses to average to cut down the the crappy data that you're getting well i, I don't do that i run two pulses to average and honestly you could probably leave it at one but it, you know it's just force of habit i've always done this so this is our input and we'll go to our pin map and here you'll see that i've got where are we at do, do, do. sorry this one's a little busy there we go drive shaft speed it's on uh j2a13 right now <clears throat> what we have is the ability with a with a dominator we can go view outputs and we can look I might have the wrong, I don't know. We can use it, I think I have the wrong global open. But anyway, we can use it, we can use an output, a high output um, to power that if we wanted to. Like, oh, here you go. So I have it grayed out probably because I moved it, but uh, turbo speed power, right? So this right here, I know why, because this this car is my personal car and I'm powering it through the uh, the same output as uh, the profiler. So, and on a, on a uh, smart wire. So, but we can use a high output right here to power the drive shaft. Um, let me open up, I'll open up another global, show you what I'm talking about. Um, here we go, so we'll go V5, and let's go this one, go pin map. So here, this is a little simpler explanation. But anyway, uh, drive shaft speed, the reason I had the other one open is because I wanted to show you data from that and show you that it wasn't uh, smoothed or anything. So drive shaft speed and then view outputs and we have uh, DS ground, right? So it's a ground output and that's where we're terminating our ground to. And then um, DS power right here. So this is where I'm sending my 12 volt to it. And then we view inputs and we've got drive shaft speed right here on this one. So if you don't have a dominator, that's fine. Give it a good clean 12 volt switched and then go to view fixed and you're going to want to grab your sensor ground. So uh, right here or right here, A14 or B14. So and if you're using a dominator and you don't want to use an output, um, just grab any one of your sensor grounds here. And if you want to, you can use um, J2B20 for a low current 12 volt output or you can you should be using uh j j1 b20 right here to power your cam and crank if they're 12 volt crank so a couple different ways to wire it up but you want your power and your ground to be coming out of your ecu for the drive shaft um, ideally your power can come from a good clean you know switched uh you know maybe you're using like a relay board to power your ecu up and you can just grab the terminal off of that relay board and power up your drive shaft as well. Um, so let's look at data, right? So we've got, here we go. This is the law, or this is the global file, right? So go out day two, round one. And then this is the uh, data log. So go out Saturday, round one, which was day two. So on this log, um, I made drive shaft speed a little bit brighter in yellow. You can do that by double clicking on a style drive shaft speed and then you just change your line type make it a little bit bigger but uh but i've already done that just so it's a little bit easier to view in this video since my screen capture software doesn't want to work so a lot of times what happens is you see a drive shaft speed 
um, trace that looks terrible. You know, you get a lot of jumps all over the place, up and down. And if you're if if you're trying to do uh, traction control, whether it be through Davis system or through um, Holly or or whatever you're doing, um, those jumps are going to make your drive shaft uh, speed or you know your 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 traction control terrible, right? Like it's going to be very counterproductive. So what I see a lot of people do is they come over here to drive shaft speed and they smooth it, right? So if you notice, there's no smoothing on this trace. All right, so zero. So what a lot of people do, they'll come in here and they go, oh, okay, well, I'll just make this look a little bit better and I'll go 11 points. Now I want you to watch this. Well, that's useless, right? So adding all that smoothing to your drive shaft curve is useless because we got, we got rid of all of the, the, the good data that we're looking for, right? So <clears throat> get rid of the smoothing. There we go. So uh, there's going to be, a, I'm going to be putting up a, together a series of videos about the profiler and why good data from the drive shaft is absolutely critical. But if we look here, uh, we, we've got some, some bumps here that we need to, to actually look at. And with, if you have bad data, you're going to see spikes all over the place. And I've, I've seen quite a few posts lately uh, from people that have, um, had some issues with, with drive shaft speed and noise and whatnot. And, um, Yes, some of it is is, is bad wiring, uh, and then uh, part of, or you know, if it is good wiring, uh, there's a good chance that the tooth is too thin, or the magnet is too small, or the sensor gap is too wide. Um, but uh, needless to say, every single time that I've used this combination right here, the Davis ring and Davis sensor, I put them on a lot of cars. I have had the same type of results go over here where we have no smoothing. We've got two pulses per average, okay? Two pulses to average and we got 32 teeth, right? So we got more resolution uh, than anything else out on the market and we have better data. So it may cost a couple bucks more, but if you're gonna rely upon drive shaft speed to actually tune the car, then, um, you know, tune the car to get it to go down the racetrack, then, then this type of data is important. So to show you that this isn't noise, right? Uh, what we have here, if we look over here, this is uh, the G meter, right? So the, we're only, we're 0.8 into the run right here, okay? So things got a little bit hairy around 0.6 right here. But if you look, the G meter started to, uh, to show us that, right? And then um, if we look on this run, max G on this run was 2.6 Gs, okay? Um, this is a pass for my personal car. I don't, I don't share data on customers' cars, but this is a pass for my personal car. Uh, this run actually went 104.960 foot, and then um, things kind of got a little bit out of hand uh, a little further away, and it's because, uh, to be honest with you, right around here, be honest with you i um i did not uh set up wheelie control with my uh my vps so we were racing and i was in a rush and uh, if we look at pitch you can see this line right here let me close a couple of these other ones it's a little bit easier but this is just i'm just trying to just trying to show you the fact that this is good clean data this is what we want right um if we look here this is pitch and Right here, we're at, we're already at two point, here we go, we're at like 2.8 degrees by 1.4 into the run. So right around the 100 foot out, um, you know, right, right here, things started to get a little sketchy. Uh, and then um, all the way out here at 2.2 into the run is when it really went into a power wheelie. Uh, and, you know, obviously had to, to pedal it. So the, the attempt of pedaling it was right here which is 1.8 into the run, uh, but it was already climbing towards the back bumper. And then here at 2.2 into the run is where, you know, things got exponentially worse. So for reference, this run here is on radials, uh, car weighs 3,200 pounds, and it went 104 with a nine to the 60 foot, right? So our 60 foot is all through here, right? So this is our 60 foot. And then, um, so this, all this data here is in our 60, whoops, sorry. 
me fix that again. So all of this data is in our 60 foot. Where are we at here? One O. Oh, there we go. So pretty much this data right here is our 60 foot. Okay. So uh, that's where a lot of you guys are struggling, right? Is to get these cars to 60 foot. If you don't have good data in the 60 foot, how can you use the data that's that's at your fingertips to actually accomplish anything, right? So uh, 32 teeth bringing sensor gives us all the re uh, the resolution that we need to make the calls on what we want to do with the track. And there's no noise in this. There's no shoddy spikes and you know peaks and valleys all over the place here. Uh, and then as we go out further into the run, this is what I was showing you is that this blue line here is pitch, and it you know went to the sky uh, up here, 12 degrees of pitch. It maxed out the VPS. Um, it drug the parachute bar uh, a little bit, or the parachute mount a little bit, um, and still coasted to a 291 of the 330. So this is uh, about as perfect a data as I can show you for the need for good drive shaft speed. Uh, and this is why I wanted to, to show you this run as opposed to you know something that was good and clean, right? A good clean pass. Um, wouldn't have shown us all of this. So, and if we compare our x-axis G-meter, right, to the drive shaft, well, here you can see the G-meter started getting a little bit pissy right around here. And you can tell it correlates, right, um, to the data from the drive shaft. So uh, we're talking about, this is, you know, 1.140, 1.149, uh, we're, we're logging at 300 frames a second here, 1.130, uh, you know, so, so we've got a lot of, of data points here, and it shows us here, look at the drive shaft laid over, went flat, well, why? So the G meter, right? So the G meter started to calm down, right? So I'm not gonna tell you why it laid over, except for the fact that um, traction control tried to start help this thing, so, uh, that'll be for a later video, but um, but that's the purpose of having good data. So don't mean to ramble, don't mean to you know go too in depth over this, but the drive shaft speed data is important, and um, I always rely upon Davis for it. So uh, there's there's uh, plenty of ways to uh, get in contact with a good dealer for Davis Technologies parts. You can order direct from him. Uh, I'm also a dealer for Davis Technologies parts. I'm not trying to plug. My company is trying to sell you something. Um, you welcome to buy it from any Davis dealer or buy it direct. Uh, Davis has got a really good um, system out there for for dealer network, and uh, the goal is to have the dealer support the the product and sales, and try to get the phone calls off of him. Um, and then, obviously, if you you get to a point where you as a dealer don't know something, then you know you hit up you hit up Shannon. But uh, I am a dealer, and again, I don't know it all. So uh, I'd be happy to sell you and I'd be happy to refer you to a different dealer or contact your current dealer for maybe Holly products and they might be a dealer for Davis as well. So support your dealers, support your good manufacturers and uh, support your good companies and buy the best if you expect to have the, the best results. So hopefully this helped. See you.